Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting pig in a blanket and I'm going to be sipping on some ginger tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright so for my materials today I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me you can certainly switch up the size but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are Fire Red, Titanium White, Burnt Umber, which I like to call Brown, Deep Yellow, Mars Black, and Thallow Green. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes, I'll get them in order here. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round synthetic brush, and I have a number three round synthetic brush, and I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same type and, and size of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are red, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a pig pink <laughs> that I'm gonna use for my background. So it's gonna be mostly white. I'm gonna use a tiny bit of brown and a tiny bit of red in it, and I'm gonna color the entire canvas that color. So I've already pre-mixed my pink that I'm gonna be using. It's a very soft, neutral, type of pink. So what I did was I used a bunch of my white. I used a teeny tiny dot of brown and a teeny tiny dot of red and mixed them together. So it's mostly white. The red is clearly going to make it pink and the brown just kind of neutralizes it. So it's more of like a pig skin color as opposed to like maybe like pink bubble gum or something like that. So it gives it more of a neutral, natural tone. So then once I've got my color that I want, I'm just gonna paint the entire canvas with that. You can use any brush stroke that you want because it is such a light color that you most likely will not detect those brush stroke marks. So if you wanna use circles or dots or just, you know, lengthy, horizontal or vertical strokes like I'm using, feel free to use whatever kind of gets that paint on in just a nice consistent manner over the entire canvas. You might find if you, if yours ends up being a little bit streaky because maybe you used a different type of pink or a different type of paint, you could certainly just go about and do a second coat and that'll give you a nice flat, um, consistent layer to this background color. And I'm just going all the way to the left and the right and making sure that I've got a nice solid coat. What I like to do when I'm, when I'm done with um, applying a background coat like this that I know is going to be just a solid color is I will go, um, I'll take my brush and I'll go back and forth over the whole thing while it's still kind of wet and that way that'll kind of level out any spots that might be thicker or thinner than the other so now that i've got that done i just take my brush and i go back and forth if i have little spots that i've missed i can hit them then if i have heavier spots this will help to thin them out and then we are going to be using our pencil for the next step so once you've got this done you can uh, put the large brush away, take out your pencil, and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be drawing an outline for our pig and its blanket. I do recommend before you start the step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to guide you through a series of markers and we're going to connect those markers and just give ourselves a nice generic basic shape for our pig that we'll be able to utilize during the painting process. When I'm doing uh, these type of drawings I do like to start with a basic shape and we build off of that so it's nice and easy to follow along with. So the shape that we're going to start with on this one is we're going to start with a circle. So in order to find where you want to put this circle uh, what I did was I found myself the center of my canvas, left to right and top to bottom, which for me is right about here. Then what I did is I went up about an inch to an inch and a quarter and over almost two inches, and this will be my first mark. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come straight down from that about five and a half inches, give myself another marker in through here. Then what I do is I go directly up to the center of my circle, now, at this point, your top and bottom might be at a different, if you're freehanding it, it might be at a different length than mine. So what you could do is you could, in essence, take a brush or some other kind of measuring tool to see how far apart you did that. And from the center point of that circle, you can put your measuring tool in the middle, and then you can give yourself a mark on one side of it and at the other side at the same distance to however tall you did it. So that'll give you your four markers for your circle. And then what you'll do is you'll just connect these markers. So I caution you, when we have four markers like this, our tendency is to kind of go straight to them and then you'll have like a diamond type of shape. You wanna just make sure that you curve these around creating a circular shape and not like a square type of shape. So it might take you a minute to kind of bump out these curves if you, you know, if you haven't done this kind of way of making a circle before, but something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as it's not straight across, that'll help guide you through it. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start building off of this circle. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a snout. So if this is the top of my circle in through here, I'm gonna come down about a half of an inch and over to the right. This is gonna be the top of my snout. It's gonna cross over this circle. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit past my halfway marker here, so right about here. So that'll be as high and as low as I do it. Then I'm gonna just bring this out in a kind of a semi-circle type of a shape. And then I'm gonna also bring it into the face farther than I did here. So I'm almost halfway, if this is halfway into the face, I'm a little bit shy of that. So that's about as wide as I'm making it. And then I give it a little dip down in this bottom section and then I'll just connect this top in through here. Again, your snout doesn't have to be exactly the same size as mine, but something like that will totally work. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself the two ears and the top of the head. So in order to do this, I wanna kind of guide myself where the face is, and then I'll put the ears on afterwards. So I'm gonna go from, um, if this is my halfway or my marker in through here, I'm gonna go up about an inch from that and then I'm gonna find the center. This is gonna be where the, um, the side of the head is gonna come out or the top of the head. Then I'm gonna come up from here about an inch and a half and then over on my snout, <laughs> I'm gonna come over about, I would say half of an inch to an inch right in through there. I'm gonna connect these three with a big oval or the top of an oval. So something like this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be, you know, bigger on one side or, you know, whatever you want it to be. It's just a little pig head. It can have, take on different shapes. <laughs> so we've got that in through there. Now I'm gonna build my ears off of this. So I'm gonna come right at this kind of meeting point. My ear's gonna come out there. I'll come up here. This is maybe about a half of an inch to an inch higher than my circle in through here. And I'm gonna come out maybe about an inch and a half to two inches. Yeah, it's probably more like two inches. And then I'm gonna give myself this cute little ear, something like that. I'll do the same thing over on this side. So if you just come directly to the right from here, something like this, and then go up just a little bit because I've got my head turned a little bit. So something like that. And this I'm gonna come up from the snout a little bit. Or actually, let me, let me bring it into the snout a little bit like that. And then I will connect these two 
with the a little bit similar of a shape but we're just seeing part of the ear so we'll just have a little bit less to show in through there i'm going to give myself a couple of areas for the eyes so right where this snout meets in through here i'm gonna go to the right of that actually the side of the head in through here give myself a little bit of a curved line like this this is going to be where my eye goes on this side we're only seeing a piece of this one to the left, we're gonna see this whole one. So I'm gonna go from the top of my snout over to the left, somewhere in through here, give myself a circular shape that's, up, I would say maybe three quarters of an inch wide by three quarters of an inch tall. We're seeing this more head on. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself the outer shape of the face. So this is too circular right now. I want there to be some piggy, chin and stuff <laughs> so i'm going to come a little bit into this snout like this i'm going to give myself a little kind of ripply line that comes down in through here and comes past my circle like this and then kind of just co comes back up to this side this will give me the um the bumpy or fatty part of the side of the face then what you can do is I want to have a mouth, so I'm going to take this um, this first little bump that I had, and I'm just going to kind of give myself a little bit of a mouth um, line. I don't have to do anything exciting right now, just giving myself a little bit of information in through there. Then I'm going to erase a couple of these lines, or get them a little bit softer. So I just pulled out my eraser. My circle, I don't really need that anymore. So if you have a really bold pencil, you, you don't have to erase it all the way, but erasing some of it will help to make your painting in process not so confusing. So this will just allow us to kind of see the pig for the pig and not get distracted by that circular um, shape that is that we just drew. And then what I'm gonna do for my blanket is I'm gonna have a nice freestyle blanket coming along. So on the left-hand side, I'm gonna come up, I would say a little bit higher than um, your pig chin. So somewhere in through here is where I'm gonna start my blanket. It's gonna be kind of rippling all along the head and I'm gonna end it way over here, or just maybe a two or three inches from the bottom of my canvas. I do need a big uh, area where my rear end of my pig is gonna go, so when I do this back part, I'll be giving it a, a bump to indicate that. I don't necessarily want the blanket to go too, too high, so I'm just gonna go maybe about an inch and a half to two inches above the head. We're gonna connect these three markers. So I'm gonna start over here, and then I'm just gonna give myself a nice kind of wavy line that indicates the bumps of a blanket on that side. And then on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing but I'm gonna give it a little bit more shape for the body. So I'm gonna kind of give myself a little bit of some bumps in through here, right about where this ear is. This is where I'm gonna kind of bring it out like this, kind of ride it along what I would believe to be the pig's back, curve it around what would be the pig's butt, and then bring this line in through here. Then I'll just make a pig's butt over here with this oval type of a shape. And if you went too close to the edge, you can always back your blanket up, or if your blanket's too far to the left, you can always move your blanket out, whatever works for you. Maybe you want more of your pig butt to show. And then I'm gonna just give myself a little curly cue for its tail. And then you can do any kind of adjustments that you want. That's about all I'm gonna be doing for my outline. We're gonna use our medium brush for the next step Actually, no, we're gonna use our large brush for the next step. So you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the base coat for our blanket. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are thalo green, white, and brown. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a nice, soft, childlike green. <laughs> I don't have a specific name for it, but. This is what I'm going for, this color right here. So how I got to that was I used a bunch of phthalo green, a little bit of white paint, and just a teeny tiny touch of brown. And your color does not have to be exactly the same as mine. Yours could be lighter or darker or greener. Maybe you want a yellow blanket. Feel free to make whatever color blanket that you would like. And once you've got the desired color that you want, you're just gonna paint in the whole blanket. So I'm gonna go right up to my pencil mark near my, um, you know, my pig 
and then I will go over my pencil mark when it comes to my blanket because I know that my pig fur and detail around my pig will help to hide any of the pencil mark for that area but as far as the area around the edges for the blanket I just want to make sure that I have good coverage over that pencil so it doesn't show through the paint so I just make sure that I go over a little bit with the with this initial coat and there's nothing fancy here if your paint is a little bit streakier and you're concerned about that you can always do two coats on this and or when you're doing this just paint in the direction that you feel that the fabric would be flowing on the on the piece of uh, on the blanket so if I'm going down here I can always move my brush in the direction that I feel that fabric would be moving so if you do have streaks in your paint that will just help to um, aid it won't matter because it will be going in the direction of the of the movement of the fabric and that way it'll it'll work its way in it will, will look like you like it's part of the blanket as opposed to a distinct brush stroke that's going in the wrong direction so that's up to you if you want to do that and if you bump into your ear a little bit more than you had expected it's okay <laughs> because I just did and I know that during the detail process on my little pig I'll be able to modify the edges and um, correct any any areas that I went a little bit too close and of course you could certainly use a smaller brush than I'm using as well to get this in and then again I'm just going to go all the way over to the edges in through here and the edges of the blanket don't have to be um, exactly as you had drawn them out if there's areas that you want to um, go in a different you know you want them to bump out a little bit more or however you want if you feel that they need to be modified at all feel free to do so because we are going to be doing highlights and shadows and we also will have a design or a pattern type of decorative element to the blanket so that will help to um, make any more corrections or change the look of it at all and then once you've got this done we're actually going to be using our small brush for the next step so you can put this large brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the eyes and the ears i'm going to be using my small brush or my small brush my small round brush and the colors i'm using are black brown red yellow and white um and if i use any others i'll let you know so what i'm in essence going to do is i'm going to be putting little shadows inside my ears especially this one because I feel like you can kind of see into this ear maybe a little shadow at the bottom of the ear so it looks like it's kind of rounded and then we'll put some a little bit of a highlight at the top of the ears we're gonna paint our eyes starting with black and then we'll put some little details on top of them so I'm gonna start with my eyes so that way the black has a chance to dry while we're doing the ears and then we can come back and put some detail on it so I just put black paint on my brush and I'm not doing anything fancy here I'm just gonna be coloring in the section that we had outlined with black paint and then I do on my um, animals and stuff when I know that they're gonna be nice and fluffy and furry I like to give all areas kind of soft edges so I'm not going in for a real firm edge on the exterior of the of these eyes and then I'm gonna do the same thing to this one so just black on my brush you can also use a little bit of water or liquid medium on your brush in order to give yourself the control um, of this small area that'll make your brush a little bit more easy to maneuver because you won't be pushing too hard with it to try and get the paint off of it it'll just kind of um, the paint with the moisture in it will sink into the crevices of the canvas and it's a lot easier to work with I'm also on this eye going to pull out a little bit of a mark up at the top of the eye as well on the left hand side as well as kind of bring in a little bit of a dark area down in through here They'll, that'll represent like the little corner of the eye. I don't think I'd see it on that one so I'm gonna leave the other one alone and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just wiping my brush off of my paper towel just make sure I have a nice soft edge around this area we're gonna add a little bit more detail to it in a minute after it dries but that's how I'm gonna start now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put a little bit of brown paint 
on my brush. I'm going to start the uh, ears area. So I'm going to put these little kind of um, darker pieces within that center of the ear and then at the bottom of the ear I'm putting a little bit of darkness. So this will give the, the shape of the ear a little bit more form if you have um, this area that kind of dips down and under the, the bottom part of the skin of the ear. So that'll give you that illusion. I'm also going to put a tiny bit of this up in through where I feel the the top edge of the ear would meet the inside edge of the ear. So I'm going to put this somewhere up in through here just as a little bit of a shadow underneath the edge of that ear. And then I would come over to the other side and, and decide if I want to do anything similar. So I feel like I'm going to have a little top edge up here. So maybe I have a little shadow underneath that. So just reloading with a tiny bit of brown paint on my brush and I can just kind of put it on there and rub it out. I think I might have um, that shadow down at the bottom too. So a little bit of that shadow down at the bottom and then if you feel you would have a couple little pieces popping out. But again, we're only seeing this one from the side. So I don't need much in through there. Now what I'm going to do on the ears is I'm going to make myself a darker version of my pink pig pink. <laughs> So I've already pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm headed. What I in essence did was I used the same color combination which was red, brown, and white. Only this time I used much less white. So red, brown, and a teeny touch of white. So this is going to give me a much darker version of the pink skin color that we made. And of course you can, you know, have it look any specific way that you want, but this is where I'm headed with mine. This is going to give me an, another layer to these ears so they look like they're kind of dipped in. We'll use the same color on the snout too. So I just have a little bit of that dark pink on my brush and I'm just going to kind of rub it in to this ear. So I don't need a lot. I'm just really looking to give myself another kind of dimension to the ear. I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown too just to make sure that I've got some of um, make sure that it works well with the those little hairs in the ears too and if you felt that you needed to pick up some of your original pink you certainly could but this is looking pretty good to me. I just picked up more of that dark pink maybe a little bit of my light pink just around that the edge of the ear make sure that they kind of work well together so Dark pink, light pink, and brown are my color combination on the insides of the ear. I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side. Let me just put a little bit more of my light pink on here just to get it to look like it's really working well. That looks good to me. So I'm going to pick up some of my dark pink, put it on the inside of this ear. And again, you don't need much. Like I, I say that a lot. And I, and, and I say it a lot for a reason because the, the paint goes a long way. And if you build it in these layers, you really don't need much to, to create a great effect. Picking up a little bit more of my brown just to make sure that this all kind of translates the way that I want to. And then a touch of my light pink just to make sure I got this top of the ear the way that I want it. I'm also going to put a little lighter version um, which we'll be using for some of our fur later. This is going to be like a light yellow color on the top of the ears. So I've pre-mixed it so you can see where I'm headed. This is going to be my light yellow color. I got to that by using yellow, white, and a touch of brown. And then I just spun it together. I'm looking for a nice pale natural neutral yellow color, almost like blonde hair kind of color. And that's what I'm going to be using a lot on the exterior fur of my pig. So I've got that light yellow on my brush and I'm just going to kind of put a little bit at the top of these ears. And I know that this is where I'm going to start to have a little bit of fur happening. So I'm really just kind of tapping it in. You can have the evidence of your um, pink underneath. This is just adding that little bit of a uh, start to the furry kind of layer that we're going to be putting on. So just a little bit at the top of this ear. And if you want a little fluff, you can certainly bring out a couple of those pieces. And then I'm going to finish the eyes. So what I'm going to do for the eyes is I'm going to wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put a little bit 
of yellow and brown on my brush at the same time. So I have a little yellow and brown on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna create a colored part for the eye. So I'm gonna go right from here and just kind of bring this down in a little curved manner. I just picked up a little bit more yellow because I know this is gonna go darker as it dries so that yellow will help to pop it in. And if you feel you can see a little of this one, go for it. Just put a little kind of sliver of it in through there. Then I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna to pick up a tiny bit of white paint, give myself a couple of little sparkles down the eye. So maybe we'll go like with a kind of a, a dash dot dot and a dash dot dot. And if you felt that you would see a little bit on this eye, maybe just a little tiny dot. Then I'm gonna just pick up, I wipe my brush off. I'm picking up some brown paint. I wanna give myself a little bit more information around this eye before we head on into the final fur details around it. So just a little bit of brown right now. I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of wrinkles underneath the eye, maybe bring a little bit more around here. I'm probably gonna pick up a little bit of that dark pink as well, but right now just kind of giving myself little bits of information around that eye. And now I'm gonna pick up dark pink plus light pink just to give myself a little bit more depth around these eyes. So this is dark pink plus light pink on my dirty brush, and this will give me a little bit more information around there. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just picked up a little bit of brown. Again, this eye we're not seeing as much, but having some of that detail in there will help to make it look more realistic. So now it's light pink and um, dark pink to give me just a little bit more information in through here and then you can just fiddle with it all you want just know that we are going to be doing more detail with all the fur so if you don't get this perfect right now you can continue to fiddle with it as we develop the fur more and then we're going to be using the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our snout and the mouth. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are um, brown, black, white, and my two pinks. I imagine my light pink and my dark pink, but I might not use both of them. I'll let you know when I use them. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna be um, giving myself the information of where the nostrils are. I'll give myself um, a nice kind of distinct line for the mouth. I might move my bump over to the right so it's more centered underneath my not my snout but I'll do that when I get to it but um so I'm going to put those little nostrils in place give myself a line and then we'll work out the highlights and shadows to make that snout really kind of pop out so I'm going to start with a tiny bit of black plus water on my brush and I'm going to give myself just these little curved lines for my for my nostrils like this and like this. And then what I'm gonna do, since I have the water on my brush, I'm gonna fade this out towards the skin part, towards the outer part of the skin. So I'm just gonna take that line with a little bit of water on my brush, make sure I get it before it dries. So you might have to do one nostril at a time if you haven't, if you haven't done this type of technique before. I'm just gonna fade it right out into that skin. So you could use a little bit of liquid beet medium or whatever works for you. It doesn't have to be a perfect blend, but if you can get it to go be a little bit darker where it meets that the inside of the nostril and fade out, that'll make it look a little bit more, more realistic as opposed to just a hole in the face. So something like that, I'm gonna enhance this little black a bit more right in through here. And you can get it you know, as dark as you want in that little, uh, dip and then if you can get it to blend out that's that's perfect then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown and red on my dirty brush so I have a little bit maybe of black brown and red on my brush I'm going to give myself an outline for the mouth so I'm thinking now that I'm I'm looking at this a little bit more um, closely I'm thinking I'm going to move this little bump a little bit to the right so it's a little bit more right underneath my um, my snout. So I just moved that over just a little bit and it's just, that's just a little aesthetic thing that you might find 
would work for you. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. So it looks like the bottom of his lip is kind of centered underneath the snout. So I'm gonna take this red, brown, blackish mixture, and this is gonna be the inside, the, or the, where the lips kind of close together. So something like this. And of course you can, you know, make yours into whatever kind of pouty, pig face, you <laughs> like pouty, sincere, sweet pig face. And I just, I just put a little bit of water on my brush as well. So this way I can, again, have soft edges to it. So once I get it on there, I'm, I'm maneuvering it to have soft edges to it. So it will end up looking like it's just kind of blending into the neighboring skin around it. So that way I don't have a firm, firm edge to it. And then I'm gonna do on my nose, or my snout, I'm washing and drying my brush, and I'm gonna pick up my dark pink plus a touch of brown. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a shadowy kind of area in through this spot of the nose, as well as inside the nostrils. This is gonna give the um, snout a little bit of dimension. So this is my dark pink plus brown, and I'm gonna put it on in through here. I'm also gonna go up into these nostrils a little bit or the surrounding areas to them. And again, I'm always thinking I want soft edges. So this is gonna give me those soft edges. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more brown paint on my brush right now. And I might enhance my dark pink with a little bit of extra red. So that way I've got a nice, um, nice real pinky tone. But right now I'm just gonna pick up my dark pink to get this to blend in with the neighboring skin. So this is just dark pink on my dirty brush to get my that shadowy area to blend into the neighboring skin, something like this. And I'm gonna kinda bring a little bit of this up in these areas and through here. So I know what I'm, my, my goal here, I'm gonna have a really light area up at the top of my snout, um, which is gonna show the, the, the highlighted um, pink part to the to the nose but right now this is going to give me kind of like that dip in i just picked up some of my light pink to on my dirty brush to get this to blend in as it's going up like this and again it's skin so it can have these dips in it it can have these light areas and dark areas and then as i get up towards the top i'm going to start picking up my light pink so I can just really kind of elevate the edge of this snout in through here and make sure that it kind of blends in with the other, with the nostrils and with the other colors that I put on there. And then in a second, I'm gonna pick up maybe some uh, white to get the, the real tips or edges to be really nice and bold. And right now I'm just picking up my light pink and a little bit extra light pink on the edges of these nostrils right in through here. So those look like the like the skin is kind of popping out a little bit too. So it, as I'm going through this process, I'm looking to see, you know, where do I want that skin to pop out? Where do I want it to just kind of be part of the snout? How do I want it to be affected by these light spots and dark spots? And to me, the, the pig's nose would have, um, the skin would kind of be, it's supposed to appear kind of flat. So that's why I'm putting these lighter colors around the edges, which will make that center area go flat because the light makes it pop out, the, the dark will make it recede. So that's how I'm determining where I want these light areas and dark areas to go. I just put that um, dark pink on my brush and now I'm gonna put some white. I just wanted this to have a little bit better of a blend up in through here. So that's looking pretty good to me. I might let it dry and fiddle with it a little bit more, but I'm gonna go down to the mouth. I'm starting with my dark pink to um, just kind of get this to um, work together down in through here. I might go a little bit um, bolder with some brown in a minute, but right now just kind of want this to start to fade into the to the uh, bigger area of skin down in through here. So that was my dark pink. pink. Now I'm picking up my light pink to get it to blend in. So this was just a matter of getting that mouth to blend in with the neighboring skin. And then I just picked up a little bit more of my dark pink and I'll just keep kind of continuing with that dark pink and light pink on this mouth area until I get it to um, blend the way that I want with the surrounding area. That's looking cute. <laughs> He's starting to get his expression now. So I need to do something around the, no the 
snout so it pops out a bit. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of brown paint to give myself a little bit of a shadow on this back side. So brown is what I've got on my brush right now. Give myself a little bit of a shadow and I'm also gonna do maybe a couple of little wrinkles coming down in through here. So brown, now I'm gonna pick up my light pink. You could do light or dark pink in through here, whatever works for you to get that brown to just kind of work itself into the neighboring um, colors. I think I need to do something with this snout. I wanna do, I think I'm gonna go a little darker. I'm picking up a touch more brown. I feel like this isn't sunk in far enough, so I just picked up more brown to get this to go just a little deeper in through here so we can see that flatness to it. And, and again, this is part of my process. I'll do something, I know what I wanna do, and then once it's drying and I see the effect that it has with the stuff around it, I may have to push it further. I may wanna go darker, I may wanna go lighter. So I just, I keep my, myself open for those options as I go through the process. And then I just wanna make sure that this sets, you know, this is being seen in front of the mouth so I can just enhance the little edges of that. And then again, I would let it dry for a minute, see if there's anything more I wanna do. I just picked up a little bit more white to get the top of that snout to, to pop out, maybe a little bit more here and there. <laughs> and then, again, just fiddle with it as much as you want. When you've got it in a desirable place, we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it as I just wanna make this light area a little bit lighter in through here. So, you, oops, there goes my, see now it's time, now, now time's up, I just dropped my brush. <laughs> you can wash or put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be finishing the pig face. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, light yellow, white, and if I choose to go into any other colors, I, I'll let you know. I'll probably use a little of that light pink too. Maybe some dark pink too. <laughs> I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my dark stuff first and work my way to the light stuff. So I'm definitely gonna have some darkness underneath the um, neck so it really looks like it's kind of nestled in that blanket. Same thing with around the, this left side. I'm gonna have a lot of darkness right in through here. I'll have some darkness behind the eyes, maybe a little bit up in through here so we can see the, uh, the delineation between the whole, the top, the bridge of the snout to the forehead. And then I'm gonna start to build my way towards lighter fur. So not all pigs have fur, but this is meant to represent kind of like a little baby pig. And they seem to, a lot of them seem to be quite fuzzy <laughs> with a little bit of fur on them. So that's what I'm gonna go for. So down at the bottom, I'm gonna start with a little bit of brown paint on my medium brush. And I, I know I want this whole bottom area. You can even bump into your, your, um, your blanket at this point and just putting the brown paint in through here and then just using, uh, almost like a rubbing type of technique to come up to come up a little bit. I'm creating a semi shadow underneath this chin area so it'll work its way into the area that I want to pop out a little bit more. I just put a touch more brown on my paint to do the same thing over on this side. And again, I know that I want it to look a little bit like fur, so you, especially along the edges, you can almost bring your brush out in a soft um, little hair type manner to pre to give these little um, edges to it. And then I'm gonna just kind of bring this in a little bit. I think I'm gonna bring this in just a little bit further so we can have almost like a little cheek in through here. That looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna put a little bit around the eyes. So I put a tiny bit more brown paint on my brush and I'm gonna put some up in through here, starting a little bit of dimension around there. I'll put a little bit, I don't ha hardly have any paint on my brush, just a teeny tiny bit. Gonna put some up in through here. I'm gonna have the bridge of my nose come in right across here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this darker stuff in through here so that way um, you'll be able to see the difference of the, the, the forehead kind of going up and see the difference between the nose um, and the forehead. So just a little bit in through there, maybe put a little bit over on this side as well just to make them look symmetrical. 
looking, thinking that's pretty good. I'm going to pick up, um, I want underneath here to go a little bit darker too. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my dark pink plus brown and just get this to go a little bit darker underneath here. I don't necessarily want it to go all brown. So I just picked up that little bit of the light or the dark pink as well. And I'm just using like a scrubbing type of technique so I can get these darker tones to occur underneath what I'm going to put the when I put the fur on there. Now I'm going to pick up a touch of my light yellow plus brown paint and I'm going to start really making some fur type of um, brush strokes. So this time I'm pulling it out along this cheek. So this is light yellow plus a little bit of brown to give myself some of this little bit of fur texture. And this is going to tie in with the color that we put on the ears earlier. So this is starting that fur process. I'm overlapping it on top of this, um, the shadowy type of colors that we put on um, a minute ago. So again, just brown plus a little bit of that light yellow. And I'm not doing much. I'm really just looking to give a little bit of texture in through here uh, and not overwork the area. But the uh, because I'm, I darkened it underneath, this is going to make this area appear to be underneath the pig as opposed to the forehead, which will look up like it's on top and you can certainly get this to blend in as much as you want. I'm not going for a lot of texture here. Just want to give it some some sort of effect that there's a little bit of fur or something there. I'm going to do the same thing coming over on the side. In a minute I'm going to I'm going to drop my brown and just use that light yellow, but right now I still have both of them on my brush in order to get all of these to blend in nicely together. I'm thinking that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit of the brown and yellow. Again, very little bit of the brown, just a touch of um, the brown plus that light yellow is going to start this beautiful dimension going up the head, maybe a little bit back in through here where it's crossing over into the ear. So brown plus that light yellow, it's going to cross over these little pieces of hair that are going to go in, in front of that ear. And this side, we don't need to do that because that ear is already taken care of. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just without washing my brush, I'm picking up that light yellow and I'm working my way towards that snout area. So I'm choosing to use this light yellow as a um, kind of a progressive color to get to the white of the fur. You could use a light tan, you could use whatever you want. Um, I am going to be having white fur on my pig and I want this pink to show underneath. Um, so this light yellow is will allow me to progressively get there without it looking unnatural. So again, right now I'm just picking up the light yellow, working my way to where I'm going to have the whiter um, fur. And I'm not overdoing it because I want some of that pink to show underneath. Up and through this area, I am bringing the brush in the direction that I feel the fur would be um, falling or growing. So I'm kind of moving my brush around the curvature of the head. And then when I get up to the top of the head, I'm going to start pulling out a couple of little pieces to make it look like he's got little fluffy hair along that top. And when I add the white pieces on top of that, it'll look even more natural. As we, we're going to be doing the um, blanket as well. So you might end up wanting to add more fluff on that head after we put the blanket on, but this is, this is a good start for us. So now that I've got that, now I'm going to pick up white on my dirty brush. I'm going to give the top edge of my snout right up in through here. And then I'm just going to bring this down and get it to blend into that light yellow. So I will overlap some of this white into that light yellow. So that's how we get it to progressively go in, in that direction. And then on the top of the head as well, right now I just have white on my brush, but I'm not overdoing it. So you're able to, it's intermingling with all those colors that we put underneath it. And I think that's one of the biggest tricks to doing believable kind of fur and stuff like that is allowing for those layers that you're doing to be visible and to talk to one another and to have an effect on each other. So if you're if you're doing the layering process like I'm doing and you go and do a layer and all of a sudden you can't see any of the work that you did underneath it, that just means that you've used too much paint on your brush and you've 
you know, kind of overpainted all the little details that built that were meant to build their way to the ending result. So you can just kind of start the process over if that happens. You can always revert to the original layers that you put on there and then just kind of build it back in that progressive way. I'm gonna put a little bit of this white on the top of the ears as well. Just give myself a little fluff on the top of the ears. And then you can fiddle with it all you want. We're gonna use the same medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our pig butt. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are dark pink, uh, brown, and maybe some, and definitely some white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make it a little bit darker at the bottom, lighter at the top, give myself a little squiggly tail. So I'm gonna start with some of my dark pink on my brush and I'm gonna give myself a little squiggly tail. So I'm just going right along my pencil mark. You might find that you want yours to be bigger or smaller or whatever you feel it should be is fine. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of brown with the dark pink on my brush, I'm gonna start at the bottom of the butt and work my way up. So I've got dark pink and brown on my brush right now. I want the bottom of it to be a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel because I feel like I have too much paint on my brush now. And then I'm just gonna work my way up with that dark pink. So just giving myself a little bit of a gradient. And of course you could make the edge of the bum look fluffy too. If you wanted there to be more fluff on, on the butt, you could bring it out, but definitely at least bring it out to where your pencil mark is. And then I'm just gonna keep picking up my dark pink as I work my way towards the top of the butt. And I'm just kind of tapping my brush to give it a little bit of texture. And then now I'm gonna start picking up white on my dirty brush. So what'll happen is the butt will get <laughs> I don't have a better name for it. The rear end of the pig will get a little bit lighter as it goes up. My goal is to be able to keep the color different from the background. So even though that background is my base color, I wanna be able to see the edge of this um, object. So I need to make sure that it either is lighter or darker than that background. So I just picked up white paint. I'm gonna tackle the top and through here, go all the way to my pencil mark and then I can just kind of rub it in. On the tail, I'm gonna give a tiny bit of detail to the tail. I might need a little bit more white just to cover up my pencil mark in through here. So just make sure my white is thick enough to cover that and then make sure that this kind of blends in the way that I want it. There we go, that's looking pretty good. And now I'm gonna just wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put a touch of brown paint on my brush so I can get a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of my tail. Again, just to give it a little bit of dimension, you could even, um, you know, make the tail bigger or smaller. I think actually now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint, just give myself a little highlight, something like that, little, little dimension on my tail. And then we're gonna be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your pig butt done, <laughs> you can uh, put your medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the highlights and shadows on our blanket. I'm gonna be using my large brush. You could certainly use your medium brush for this step too. Wherever your comfort zone is, is totally, wherever your comfort zone is, is totally fine. So what I'm in essence gonna do is I'm gonna make some nice shadows along my pig face so that way it looks like the blanket's kind of like dipping in. And then I'll make a couple of strategic shadows over in through here to make it look like the blanket kind of dips in at the bottom of the pig. And then we're gonna add some highlights to make it look like it's nice and bumpy. So I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of black and brown on my brush, really teeny tiny bit, just on the corner of my brush. I'm gonna start up in this area, up in through here, and I'm just gonna kind of rub it and push it in towards the, um, the skin of the pig. So something like this, and then I can do the same thing coming down in through here. So just kind of push it right in towards there. You might want it lighter or darker. Because I'm using a bristle brush, I can then um, kind of blend it out 
into the neighboring area because the brush is nice and firm and it allows me to move that paint a lot while it's still wet. I'm gonna put a big dip in my blanket right underneath here, right underneath this chin. So again, I still have a little bit of my black and brown on there and you might want yours to go lighter or darker or whatever is comfortable for you, but it theoretically would be the darkest right where it meets that pig. I'm gonna give a good kind of area in through here. So this way it looks like it's kind of nice and dipped in. I need to reload my brush with a tiny bit of black and brown. I'm gonna do the same thing over on the edge of the face in through here. So again, very little bit of paint on my brush. And if you bump into your pig and you feel like you need to um, make any adjustments afterwards, you can, you, can certainly do that. So I think I'm gonna start right in through here where that nose is. And then I'm just kind of pushing my brush right into the edge of the pig, something like this. And this will help to give some good organic shape to the edge of the face. So that's always a fun thing. I'm gonna have my blanket kind of popping up over here. So this is gonna allow me to just kind of rub this out a bit and get it blended in with that um, blanket color. I need a little bit more up by here in this little crevice up and through here. So again, if this brush is too big for you, you can certainly just use your medium brush to accomplish the same thing. The Again, the bristle brush allows you to kind of maneuver that paint a little bit longer um, while it's in its drying process, um, but you can certainly, with a little bit of liquid medium, extend that paint to utilize that uh, a smaller brush with it. I'm gonna do the same thing up at the top, so a tiny bit of brown and black. I like to utilize brown a lot of the time when I'm doing these kind of shadowy areas because it provides a, a little bit more translucency than just the black paint, but I also can use a little bit of liquid medium or water on my brush at the same time. So I know I have these little edges of the hair. I'm probably gonna come back and give myself that little fluffiness on that head again um, to just enhance that appearance at the top so it looks like the little fluffies are on top of the blanket. So if you lose your little fluffies right now, like it looks like I'm going to, don't worry about that. You can always add them back on top, but I'm more concerned right now about getting a nice believable shadow on this blanket so it has some good depth and dimension to it. And again, I can just add those little hairs on the hairs back onto the onto the pig whenever I want to. So that's looking pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wipe off my brush on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up just brown paint. I want, a, and I'm just wiping it off. I want a pretty good shadow in this blanket in through here to indicate that it dips in. So I'm gonna go a little bit away from here. So I already know that I've got a bump in through here. So this could be the bump of the blanket here. So I'm gonna go a little bit to the right of that. And then I'm gonna give myself this kind of dark area that I feel would kind of be where the blanket would dip in next to the, um, next to the pig or at the bottom of the pig's body because the pig's body is round, you could have a little dip in down at this bottom and that'll make the blanket look like it has, you know, it's got its own form. And you can have soft edges or firm edges. I'm having a soft edge in through here so it just will blend into the rest of the blanket. And then I'm gonna put some other strategic shadows so it'll show like the folds of the blanket or the ripples of the blanket. So again, I'm just using brown at the moment I'm gonna put a bunch down here. I have a, a bump right here, so I could theoretically have a nice kind of wave to that um, blanket in through here. So just adding a bit of darkness in through there. I feel like the blanket would be a little bit darker as it coming down towards the bottom of my canvas anyways. So that will help to enhance that. I'm gonna do a little bit over in through here too. I'm gonna to have my blanket kind of coming up like this and maybe coming down in a folded way in through here so I can add a bit of darkness down in through here. So this darkness that I'm adding now is going to um, just provide the viewer with the information as to where all the ripples and stuff are. So now that I've got that, I wanna blend these shadows into the regular blanket. So without washing my brush, I just picked up some of my blanket color and I just wanna make sure that these shadows blend pretty well before I start adding my highlights. 
some of the shadows I'm going to want to blend well. Some of the shadow like this I might keep very um, distinct. So this is just on my dirty brush, my original blanket color, just to make sure that I've got these blended in the way that I want. So I go on the outside of that shadow area, put my color, my blanket color, and then I'll just um, rub it into that shadow in a kind of a dry brush type of a way. So something like this will help it blend in. So I'm in essence kind of overlapping those two soft sections or soft edges to the sections. So that's looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding my highlights. So my highlights are going to be wherever I want that blanket to pop out the most. So I definitely want it to pop out up here. I'm going to have it popping out in each one of these ripples and then I'll have it pop out and have a nice highlight on the top and through there. So this is going to be a combination of my blanket color plus white at all times until the end when I'll put a little bit of extra white on. So I've got um, my blanket color plus a little bit of white. The white is really powerful so you don't need a whole heck of a lot and I'm just going to find these areas that I want to pop out. So definitely towards the top of the blanket uh, on all sides, the top everywhere and then you just pull it down into that that blanket so it makes it look like it is bumped out a little bit. So again, my blanket color plus white on my brush, I'm going to do the same thing up in through here. So just adding these highlights and I'm allowing it to um, fade into the neighboring color so or the neighboring blanket color. If you feel that you've gone to too much you can always just let it dry for a minute and then you can just bring back some of your your blanket color so that way it will um, look nice and natural i think i'm going to have this kind of bumping up in through here i want this to be a little bit bolder in through here so this is where i'm going to have my blanket kind of coming up in through here and because i'm using both of these colors at the same time there are going to be areas that are going to appear lighter or brighter than others and that's just the nature of using multiple colors at the same time i do it on purpose because i love the effect that it gets um, in through here i kind of want this to blend a little bit like the blanket is folded over something like that looks pretty good and then i'm going to have some highlights over here so again white plus my blanket color I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna tackle this area up here first. And again, I'm using both of these, so I'm in essence giving myself a lighter version of the um, blanket color, so I can have that good transition from the, um, from the light to the dark. If you just used white or you just used um, uh, the, the regular blanket color, you, you need some kind of mid-tone or transition color and that's what I'm getting by using them both on my brush at the same time. And this is giving me all the dimension that I need or desire on here. This is looking pretty good. So again, I've got my little dip in through here, just making sure this blends in the way that I want to. And I'm going to add a bright highlight in a second, which will be with white. But right now, just making sure I've got the movement, making sure I've got some good coverage looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to start adding white highlights. So now without washing my brush, I just picked up white. So this is going to be the brightest of the bright areas. So I want this area to pop out like it is really kind of the closest to the viewer. And then I just get it to, I put my white on and then I get it to blend into that, um, the neighboring color. So don't need a lot of paint. I'm also going to um, put a little bit extra white up on these top little creases as they come over like this just to again maybe tell the viewer that there's a light source up top that is just illuminating the edges to the blanket definitely on this back side over here so again just a little bit more white on my brush and just going to pop this in these top edges and then just softly kind of manipulate it down that body i don't want it to go too too far because i want again to have the illusion that that top part is kind of popped out. We've already got the contour with the other highlight that we presented so we don't really need to do anything more to that and then just a little bit maybe more up at the top and you don't have to have it go all the way white. We're, we're going to have some decorative design elements on it later too so that um, will feed into the um, 
the brightness and stuff to it or to more detail. So don't feel that you have to go all the way white. Um, but if you're going about this and you feel like you want to do another layer or put it, you know, a little bit lighter, feel free to do so. We're going to be using uh, this, we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put designs on our blanket. So you could certainly leave your blanket the way that it is if you'd like, but I thought it would be cute to have some nice impressionistic flower type of um, design element on my blanket. So that's what I'm choosing to do. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm gonna be using my blanket color plus white, and I'm gonna be using it in various tones. So I'll be doing it darker in my shadowy areas and lighter up towards the brighter areas. So if I'm going in a shadow area, I know that my shadow area is darker than my blanket color. So I could theoretically get away with just using my blanket color to create a fun little decorative element. I don't even need to make it lighter or darker because it's already lighter than that shadowy area. So you can utilize that. I'm using, again, I just have the blanket color on my brush. If I want this to look like it's a fold in the blanket, I can put a partial piece of that decorative element. You might want to do circles or stars or hearts or X's, whatever you want is completely up to you. You could do like a plaid design. I'm just doing like a little flower type of daisy type of design, but again, it's up to you. And I'm just kind of going up this little crease. This is helping to provide more of an illusion for the blanket, like it is um, kind of folded in. Maybe I put one down in through here and I'm not, doing um, my design in any kind of symmetrical way. I'm just putting these sporadically <laughs> wherever I want to, but that was strategic just to provide an illusion. You can put some down in through here. You can put them wherever you'd like to. Um, just trying to give yourself the the color pattern with the, with the um, if it's in the darker area, use just your, your um, base color. If it's in a brighter area, you could use white plus that color. So that's pretty good, I think, for my for my darker ones. Maybe we got another one in through here. So now I'm going to start picking up my um, blanket color plus white on my brush. And so I can have this is going to be in lighter areas. And you can see I'm just having fun with my design. You you can have yours in what, I, again, whatever pattern you want. If I want it to look like it's on the side, I can just, or we're just seeing a piece of it, I can just put little pieces in through there. Maybe I've got some over in this direction. So again, right now I'm using my blanket color plus white. And so some of them are going to be lighter, some are going to be darker. You can have them whatever way you want. It's your blanket. You can have them curling in different directions if you want to. I'm going to um, have a couple of brighter ones in through here. I just put some white on my brush. And again, to give the illusion that it's kind of buckled over, if you just do part of that flower, that's going to, or whatever your design element is, that's what will provide that easy way to make an illusion <laughs> without doing much work at all. And then as I come down in through here, I'm using my um, base color plus white. So if I want it to be lighter, just use white and have fun with it. I'm gonna go up top now, maybe make some brighter ones up and through here. Maybe this one is a partial one. Maybe I've got a little one in through here. You could have them different shapes. You could have uh, obviously this is not a symmetrical pattern. You could certainly make yours in, in that way if you'd like to. I'm going to do some partial ones over here and over here and just again have fun with that. I think I need a little more white for this one so we can see it. Maybe one is over on the back here. And you know, again, I'm just, I need more white. I need more white on that one. There we go. I'm just having fun with this. Maybe making some, some X's or a three part X, something like that. You can curve them if you want to look more like little flower petals. 
enjoy the process. It's again, it's it's your your cute little pig who has been. I don't know if he's stuck or if he's he is voluntarily in this blanket, but he certainly looks cozy. So you can make yours look as cozy as you want. So I'm thinking that's pretty good. Maybe one more coming down in through here. And then we're gonna use our large brush for the next step. So once you've got as many decorative marks on your blanket as you would like, you can put this uh, medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint a border at the top of the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are predominantly white, but I might also go into my pig pink a little bit as well. So what I'm really looking to do is just kind of give myself this nice, almost angelic type of air to the painting, this nice, cute, cute additional cuteness to it. So I'm just gonna be putting some light, additional lightness up in the top, right and left. So I'm putting a little bit of white paint on my brush. I'm gonna start up in the top left-hand corner and I'm just gonna be rubbing it in a circular type of motion until it blends into the pig paint. If you're not able to get a, a blend as much as you want, you can certainly pick up that background paint in order to get it to blend in a little bit more. But this is looking pretty good to me. Just make sure I've got the blend that I want. It's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. So again, just a little bit of white paint on my brush, put it up in this corner and then work my way. Oh wait, I think I want it more cause that's not gonna take me very far. <laughs> I just put a little bit more white on my brush so I can bring it out just a little bit further. And again, I'm really just looking to provide an element so my background is not too flat. It adds a sense of maybe a light source or an airiness to it. So you can, you know, it's not totally necessary to do something like this, but this again, just kind of helps to finish the painting. You could certainly do it around the bottoms too, but I'm thinking that this is pretty good for mine. So we are going, once you've got this done, I didn't need my pig pink, but if you, if for your background pink, if you did, you could certainly utilize that to blend it in. Um, we're gonna be using our small brush for the next step so you can just get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or bottom right. I think I'm gonna go bottom left on this one and I'm gonna use white and my blanket color. And <laughs> so it's gonna just kind of get disguised right in here. So I use my initials for my signature, but you could certainly use whatever you would like. You can put your full name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark. It's totally fine. It's your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself an adorable little pig and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.